really take it seriously. Seriously enough to launch an investigation. A second aside. There are three investigations of right by the U.S. government. One, the, the most famous one, is the one you all know about. Uh, and that's the Food and Drug Administration investigation, which begins after the Mildred Brady article, roughly in late 47, really kicks into high gear in 48, and ends with the injunction against the distribution of accumulators in the literature in 54. But that investigation is roughly five, six years in, in its forms. What is a little less well known is that right after Wright came to the United States, he arrived August 20, what was it, 28, 28th, August 28, 1939. By the end of the year, the FBI has a file on him. They didn't waste any time. And when the United States declares war in Germany, we declare war on Germany December 11, 1941. Reich's immediately arrested. They actually arrest him at 2 o'clock in the morning the next day. They're rounding up anyone who's a, quote, German national. And then since, though Reich was Austrian, Austria had been taken over by Germany, he was legally a German. And he was arrested as an alien enemy. And this is kind of interesting because he was arrested with Bund members. I don't know if there was this. Bund had not yet been banned. The Bund gets banned in 42. So here he is with a bunch of Nazi sympathizers, anti-Semitic <laughs> among them, obviously. And here's this Jewish left-winger locked up with you know, all these Nazi sympathizers. And Reich was held um, for almost a month, for three and a half weeks, as an alien enemy. And he went through a hearing, etc. And it's a fascinating case. The FBI case that leads to his incarceration is a model of absolute um, incompetence to the max. And it involves a case of mistaken identity. <laughs> I mean, it's really, a, it's almost a funny story if it weren't so tragic. In any case, Reich gets out of prison in 19, January 1942. The FBI sort of closes its case on him in 43. When the INS begins its investigation in 48, and it runs to 56, so the longest investigation of Reich is this one prompted by Crombie, by this nut who goes to them and says, this guy's a communist. Now what makes this investigation, and, and it runs till 56, what makes this investigation interesting is a couple of things. About a year ago, Hobart Nielsen spoke here. Do you recall his talk? Uh, well, some of you were here. Mm -hmm. And Nielsen believes that Reich joined the Communist Party in Oslo in 34 and left in 36. I don't think that's correct, but Nielsen believes it is correct. And indeed, the FBI had an inform. Uh, someone told the FBI, and I have the document here. Um, this is a Xerox of a document from the American consulate in Oslo dated. January 18, 1941, the day after my birth. Uh, and this document, the Consulate General has now learned, however, from a highly reliable source that before 1933, Dr. Reich was a member of the German Communist Party, which was true. And as a, on his arrival in Norway, became a member of the Norwegian Communist Party. In 1936, he was expelled for not hewing to the party line. That's part of what Nielsen bases his belief on. Well, here's the thing. If Reich was in the Norwegian Communist Party as late as 36, Reich applied to become a naturalized citizen January 46. There is a law on the books in the United States that you cannot become a natural, naturalized citizen if within a 10-year period prior to your application you belong to a series of groups, and the Communist Party is one of them. So if Reich had indeed been in the Norwegian Communist Party in 36, the INS would have had grounds for taking away his citizenship, denaturalizing him. And so they go into this eight-year investigation to try to prove that Reich indeed was in the Communist Party 
uh, the Norwegian Communist Party in 36. They never find any evidence of that. And there's, con there's contrary evidence, but it would take us too far afield. Um, I can go into the details of the INS case. It is so bungled with incompetence. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable when you read this stuff. These are the guys who are protecting us. But then, you know, we happen to know that there was a woman out Midwest, an FBI agent, who said, you know, there's a guy out here who's learning how to fly planes, but he doesn't show any interest in learning how to land them. <laughs> and she reported that to the FBI long yeah. before September 11th, and the FBI ignored her. Mm. You know, so if you can see that happening in our own present day, you can imagine what these guys were like <laughs> back in the 40s. So let me just tell you this thing about the mistaken identity case. William Wilhelmreich, he never changed his name, is teaching at the New School, 55 West 12th Street. Sex economy, well, he's teaching bio-vegetotherapy, but he used the word sex economy as a sort of a, a short term for what he was doing. At the, and so it's in the New School for Social Research. At that time, there was the Worker School. And the Worker School was the Communist Party School. Its address was 35 East 12th Street, where a guy named William Robert Reich taught political economy. <laughs> you had Wilhelm Reich at the New School teaching sex economy, 55 West 12th Street. You had William Robert Reich at the Worker School, 35 East. I may be getting the address, it's not quite right, but roughly. Teaching political economy. Well, the FBI could not sort this out. But never mind that William Robert Reich was teaching long before Wilhelm Reich came to the United States. Never mind that Wilhelm Reich never changed his name. He never became Bill. I mean, to his friends in Norway, he was Billy. But in the States, he was Dr. Reich. You know, he, he made a decision to be rather formal with his colleagues as opposed to, you know, an Oslo. They say, Billy, let's go get some brews, you know. None of that happened in the state. Um, well, the FBI spent months trying to distinguish these two people. 1943, there's a document, and at this time, William, or Bill Reich, was popular over New Jersey. He was distributing communist literature out of an office in Newark. And you see an FBI agent writes and says, until we get further evidence, we're going to have to conclude that Wilhelm Reich and William Robert Reich are not the same person. <laughs> <laughs> this William Reich, by the way, moves to California and becomes William Rich. He changes his name. And he's working in a hospital. He was also a medical doctor. Well, when the INS starts its case against Reich in 48, the FBI, who had already settled that these were two different people, Say, well, we have a record on a guy named William, Wilhelm Reich, and they give his address. But then there's this other guy, William Reich, who belongs to the Soviet American Friendships. And the FBI resurrects the confusion that it had laid to rest earlier. And so the INS spends eight years trying to sort out is Wilhelm Reich William Reich. Okay. So I want to I want to talk more about sex. Uh, but I wanted to have a sense of just how crazed this is. And I've written an, arg an article about this in great detail that's now hopefully going to be considered for publication. Um, Crombie's approach to sex education is all based on fear. Uh, and I'll give you some of the details, but I want to quote from this editorial that appeared in Psychiatric Quarterly, because half the editorial appeared because Helen Haskell sent them, a, uh, sent them um, the pamphlets and said, look, it's what's being distributed. And they, they even thanked Helen Haskell for the editorial. And why can't I find the editorial? Too many pieces of paper. Here we go. Uh, is, is, is Helen Haskell working with, <clears throat> she has a relationship to write? She is a former patient of some, one of the therapists, I know not whom, and she is part of this group that becomes a committee for self-regulation. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. So here's the editorial. The editorial is entitled, remember it's on your other side of your sheet there, Psychiatric Quarterly, The Anonymous. It's at the bottom. The editorial aside, the fear, the pit, and the snare. 
which is a reference to a quotation in Isaiah. And basically, what the unsigned editorial is saying, these pamphlets stink, um, they're based on fear, and it says, of two most important matters, there is no mention. There is not a word about masturbation. Now, Kevin was talking about how Reich openly talks about masturbation back in 1931. 